know you're a writer and a speaker, but I heard that you hold the top spot for most popular blog posts on salesforce.com. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I can, yes. So in 2013, Salesforce invited me to write on their blog and our audience is their audience, our customers are their customers, so there's a lot of mutual partnership there. I dug deep down inside some of the lessons and, and things I wanted to teach the audience and, and wrote a few blog posts, and I realized that they were focusing a lot of attention on the ones that got the most shares. And so I looked at Upworthy and Huffington Post, and, and I decided I was gonna do a science experiment and create a post solely for the purpose of it getting shared. I watched five Tony Robbins videos in a row on YouTube, and I mined out a title that was exactly, perfectly shareable. I don't remember the exact seven tips that Tony Robbins wants to teach you about sales, something like that. And on my whiteboard at my house, I wrote out 15 different titles, scratched through them, chose it, went in deep, and wrote a post that I'm happy and proud of. It's not my favorite post, but the minute after I hit publish, I sent it to Tony Robbins. And Tony Robbins has like 200,000 fans on Facebook and hundreds of thousands of, of Twitter followers and LinkedIn connections. And he shared it on all three networks and it just exploded. So I have to give Tony Robbins all the credit for my post, uh, but it's still the, the most shared post in Salesforce blog history. In the last year, things have started to really scale for you. What has made the biggest difference to help you achieve that scale? So there's a lot of things that go into a company's growth. The number one thing that's contributed to our growth is our relentless focus on organizational health. So we focus on the culture of the business, our core values, and making sure that we're a well-oiled machine where people can come to work with a smile on their face with our intention for this to be the greatest job they've ever had. That's great. Now, some organizations have sales and marketing kind of as frenemies. You know, they don't always work seamlessly together. Do you have any tips or things you've learned about bringing sales and marketing together so they work better together? At SalesLoft, 50% of our revenue is generated from leads that come inbound through marketing channels. And the other 50% of our revenue is generated from a sales team that goes outbound with outreach to potential prospects. Now, when the leads come inbound through marketing, we have a team called the Inbound Sales Development Team. And this is the team that will look at all the leads that came in, qualify them, contact them, connect with them, and convert them over to opportunities. And that team actually reports to my VP of Demand Gen, who's in our marketing organization. So we've actually got the inbound sales development role reporting to marketing. And then because marketing owns inbound sales development, they collaborate with sales development and outbound sales development run by the sales organization on a routine basis. So we do trainings together, we do lunch and learns together, we do corporate wide meetings together, and a lot of things to get these two groups together. They use similar training manuals. And so we do that in order to connect the two groups together. Fantastic. Now, do you have any advice for the marketer who might struggle with connecting with their sales counterpart or vice versa. Um, do you have any quick tips or things you'd like to share? Yeah, I think the one word here is empathy. If you're in the marketing organization, think about the sales organization from their perspective. What are their challenges? What are their pains? What are their fears? You know, a lot of times marketers kind of see sales and, and think it's flashy, they're talking a lot, and they, and they associate all these perceptions with that. And then sales may see marketing and think, oh, they're just you know, giving an iPod away or something like that, right? right? And so I think it's super important for them to really put themselves in each other's shoes and feel their pains, feel their needs, and understand what they're looking to do and understanding the people that you're working with. And so that's the number one most important thing, hands down. The next most important thing is that there's collaborative communication. Our sales organization is constantly communicating with marketing what types of content they would like to see. And we even have an app, it's a Chrome extension that the sales team uses that marketing created so they can deliver and sort through content while uh, doing a demo or while communicating with prospects. And so there, there's this like real deep-seated connection between the two groups where they're working together and they understand each other. And that's really the core of, of doing, a, you know, having great relationship. Mm -hmm.